time you've been to Swaffham, you have to tell me if the end of this story is true or not. Is this familiar? Do you know the story of the peddler of Swaffham? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. We'll find out when you've heard it. You can tell me. Did you know it already? So, long ago, in Norfolk, in the town of Swaffham, there was a man who lived just at the edge of the town whose name was John Chapman. And he was a peddler. So he made his living travelling all around Norfolk, selling a little bit of this and a little bit of that, some trinkets and some cheap things and some useful bits and pieces. But it was hardly enough to live on. John was lucky if he had enough for a warm dinner at the end of the day. And he'd come home every night to his little cottage, which was really half a ruin. There was no glass left in the upstairs windows, so in the mornings, birds would swoop in and sing to him to wake him up. And the mortar was all chipped and rotting, and vines crept up that cottage and pushed their way through to tickle his toes in his sleep. But John's pride and joy was not the house in all its ruin. It was the apple tree that grew just outside. This apple tree was a riot of blossom in the spring and a cornucopia of golden, juicy apples in the autumn. And John lived this poor life, journeying up and down and selling all day. Until one day, until one night, when John was woken up in the middle of the night by a dream, the dream was a voice that rang like a bell. John Chapman, it said. Go to London, go to London Bridge. And John woke up and sat bolt upright and thought, London? I've never been to London in my life. I don't want to go to London. This dream is nonsense. And he went straight back to sleep. But the next night, at the same time, the same dream, John Chapman, Go to London and go to London Bridge. And he sat bolt upright. London? That's miles away. What is this nonsense? He went back to sleep. But night after night, the same dream, waking him up with the same instruction. What would you have done? Would you have gone to London? Hands up. Would you have started taking sleeping tablets? Hands up. <laughs> In the end. John's frustration at his need for a good night's sleep and his curiosity combined. He took his coat on, he tied it tight with a piece of string, he found his best walking stick and he set off for London. He left the roads that he knew, he headed off across the country and came eventually to that great bustling city. Anyone here been to London? Yeah. <laughs> and the sounds and the smells and the hubbub hit him like a wave. But he found his way through these strange and overwhelming streets all the way to London Bridge. There it was. Back in the days when there were still shops and houses on that bridge, John walked off found himself a place to stand and waited. John waited for whatever it was that was definitely going to happen when he got to London Bridge. And he waited. And he waited. And he waited. And what do you think happened? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. He waited all day. And then the sun set and it was dark and it was too late to go home. So John went under the bridge and wrapped himself in his coat, slept shivering. Woke up thinking maybe I just got the day wrong. Back onto the bridge, he found that same spot and he stood. He was really ready now for whatever it was. And he waited, and he waited, and he waited. And he felt a right fool. Nothing happened. John was about to turn and start the long walk back. 
when suddenly a shopkeeper from across the bridge came bustling over. Excuse me, my good man, I have to ask, what are you doing? I've seen you for two days, stood here like a lemon, and I can't help but ask, why? John went bright red. I had a dream, and the dream told me to come to London Bridge, so I came to London Bridge. The shopkeeper burst out laughing. That is the silliest thing I've ever heard in my life. Can you imagine what would happen if we all just followed our dreams hither and thither? Let me tell you about a dream that I've had for the last seven nights. I've dreamt that I'm far off away somewhere in the countryside where there's a cottage all tumble down. In my dream, this cottage, no windows with glass, just birds that swoop in and vines that creep up and poke through the mortar. And outside this cottage, there's an amazing apple tree. In my dream, I take a spade and I start digging into the roots of that apple tree. And I find a chest full of gold. But if you think I'm going to leave my life on London Bridge and go herring off across the country in search of some dream, the shopkeeper didn't get any further because John was gone. John was off running through that crowd, his tongue flapping through the people as he sped home. And he made it home in half the time. John didn't even stop to go inside, he just got a spade out of the shed and he started to dig. And John dug and dug and dug and dug until, thunk, spade hit wood. He dug some more, he dug out from under the roots of the apple tree, an ancient old chest. A chest with creaking hinges. 